Yeah, just come like you are. That's what we say. I am dressed like this for a purpose tonight, though I usually don't come like this in the winter time. It's not winter. Yeah, but you're yeah, you're like a solid guy. You never change. You're always consistent. I count on you. You know what I mean? You're just like there with your shorts all the time. <laughs> I know some of you folks came for this special occasion tonight, so we're going to try to get there rather quickly, but I want to talk to you for a second. I just want to ask you a couple things. Is anybody out there feeling lethargic like me? Did you eat a bunch of turkey? Did you have turkey at home in your fridge right now that you're probably going to make sandwiches with or maybe do some more mashed potatoes and heat it up? Uh, Anyway, yeah, I resisted eating the turkey sandwich today, though, so I actually did the turkey last night. I did Chinese food for lunch today so because I didn't want to feel sluggish. It didn't work. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, uh, Johnny Price, uh, nice to have you in the house tonight, brother. Uh, if, if, no, if, if there's anybody here that don't know who this fella and his wife, D. Price, is, they do uh, the, uh, a tribute to Johnny Cash that with the, along with the Rhythm Riders Band, and it's just probably the best in the nation uh, that, that they do. And, and I, I'm sorry, Johnny, but I think I love Dee because she does Plastic Klein. I've always loved Plastic Klein, but your wife does She does justice to that, too. So God bless you. It's nice to have you in the house tonight, brother. And it's good to have all you other folks, too. You ought to just, you know, if, if, if this is like you came out for a special occasion, you ought to just keep trying it. You got to come back. You can't just judge a, a, a something you know, that first appearance thing, you know, and yeah, you, you got to give us a second chance, too. So come on back, and, 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 and we'll, uh, we'll shmool you next time. This time, you're just going to get raw. No. We, don't we always, do we always do it raw? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I better tell the truth. Hey, Mark, there you are. I was wondering if you was here, brother. Good to see you. Anyway, so, uh, oh, Shakira, I, I want to do this right now. Uh, her mother, uh, Rashana, Shana, is um, like in the hospital right now, and she's, ha- she's having a rough time. So what I want us to do before I do anything else is get real serious here and just and pray for her. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak a prayer, and I want you all just to put your faith out there and just and, and agree with me. So we just come right now to, for uh, Shauna and... Pray for this entire family first, God, that you would give them peace and comfort, that hope would turn to faith for their mother. And, Father, I pray right now that your grace just goes and your healing mercies goes right to that hospital where she's at right now and that you touch her with the healing hand of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus over her. We ask for a miracle right now to raise her up. We say life. And we say healing, and we say health. We see a restoration and a new life and new change. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's see what else. What else was I going to do? I am, you know, see, I enjoy doing baptisms in church. I've done baptisms in January in the Pacific Ocean. If you've never been in ice cold, and Tahoe, Lake Tahoe in the winter, where it feels like little bitty needles is like going all through you. And then what happens is people stiffen up when you go to baptize them. And so instead of making it real simple and just going knee deep, you got to drag them all the way out. So, those of you getting baptized tonight, just relax. (laughs) Yeah. And if you've been ornery to me, I'm going to hold you down for the count. (laughs) We're going to get you a new start. (laughs) Resurrect! (laughs) But I want to to go through some things uh, because I want you all to to understand what baptism is all about. Uh, It's... You know, God, number one, he's very merciful. And if, if God wasn't the God of second chances, 
and third chances and fourth chances and fifth chances and on and on and on. I would have been lost because I was a hard head and it took me many, many years to, to, for it to take hold. As a matter of fact, every time I went to church, I had to get resaved. That's the way I just lived. I, had, I just had a guilty conscience about everything because I knew me. But in spite of all of that, God loved me through, and he stalked me into the deepest, dark places, you know, in, down drug alleys and even into prison cells. Until finally he said, son, are you ready to come home? Because, you see, God never left me. I left God. God's the one who will come. He's that looking for the prodigals. And he never, no matter what you do, no matter what shame you bring to his name, he doesn't disown you and he doesn't give up on you, but he's always there waiting for you to come with a repentant heart and a willingness to humble yourself and just to get back in the house. And I know he did it for me. And if he did it for me, he will do it for absolutely anybody. Amen. And so this father that continues to give chances, I want to just speak to that for a second. Because you see, he just doesn't give you a second chance, though, or a restart. He gives you a new start. In other words, this is what he says, that old that is behind is completely gone. We're going to make it as though it never existed. So that's why you got to leave the old past behind, even with its memories. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of new converts do not struggle with the old man. They struggle with the old memories. But when you let Jesus into the house, that's why you need to check and see whose shoes is under the bed. Is it the old man's shoes or the new man's shoes? What life are you living in? Because if, in fact, the new man has arrived, quit giving glory to the old man. Listen, we give more power to resurrecting the old man than we do to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to turn that around and begin to give the power to where it belongs because all power is in his hands. He's the one who will redeem your life and you will never, ever, ever be the same again. I said I was going to keep this short. We're going to have a short service tonight, huh? You believe that? I do. That's why 2 Corinthians... 517 says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, or they are, that, by the way, that he is, is added in, so it's whoever is, a new creation, here it is, old things, the old life, and everything about it has passed away, behold, all things have become new. You see, if you have invited him in, you are a brand new creation. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Not just a new start. It's a brand new creation. Listen to what Paul says, Galatians six fourteen. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. I want you to understand something here. Religion don't tell you this, but what Paul's saying is, you see, the old rules and all those regulations that religion tries to put on you, that's not the way either, because it's the new life in Jesus Christ. He is who gives you the ability to be the overcomer. Who to walk in this new life. Only God can do that. Not all these restrictions and rules and regulations, but it's in the grip of his grace that will hold you and give you a new life. It's trash. Thank you, my dear. How many people you know that will just take gum out of your hand and, and you, huh? A little bit. It was a piece. I didn't want to throw it on the floor. <sighs> There's true power in that. Somebody believe that? Somebody know that to be true? Say, yes, amen. Yes, amen. It's so. It's true. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Can I read a few more? I'm going to anyway. <laughs> so we'll talk some more about this, these regulations, all right? Paul, in, in uh, Colossians 2.11, in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In other words, it's not of the flesh, but it's of the spirit. It's a spiritual circumcision, which the flesh was the symbol of in the first place by putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. This is speaking to baptism right here. Listen closely. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Make sense? And you being raised in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you some trespasses. Huh? What does all mean in the Greek? Everything, right? Doesn't exclude anything. He has forgiven you all trespasses. Is that what that says? Don't forget that. Don't let that little thing come back and say, oh, yeah, but that, you, you know, you still got an issue with that. That's not covered. Hey, when you die, you die. That's the power of the death, burial, and resurrection because only the old nature commits sin. It's impossible for the new creation of the Lord Jesus Christ to commit sin. You see the power in that? Because you all know what a cadaver is, right? Cadavers don't sin. They don't do nothing. That's why Romans 6 said, Reckon yourself dead in Christ Jesus. And the same power that raised him will quicken or give life to your mortal body. Okay, I'm going to continue here, all right? Because we're running out of time. <laughs> here it is. Having wiped out the writing of requirements that were against us, which was contrary to us. Oh, there's that word. <laughs> you see, it was impossible for any of us to do that. You see, do you understand if Jesus didn't come, we'd all be lost? Because all these regulations, none of us could do it. No, none. That's why they had all these types and all these sacrifices to cover until the true one, the Son, would come, who would fulfill the requirement that was required of the entire human race. But only he could do it. That's how wonderful Jesus is. You want a reason to fall in love with him all over again? He paid it for you and I. Nobody else could. He did. God in the flesh himself. That's how much he loves his creation. That's how much he loves the human race. Okay, I'm almost through it. Which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. One more. Romans 6, 4. Here we go. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That word walk there, when you see that word walk, when Paul uses that word walk, that means how you conduct your life in everything, in all deeds that you do. You walk in the new life, not the old creation. And every step you take, you take with purpose. In other words, you're walking in the Spirit because the Spirit lives and abides in you because the new creation is inside you. Do you understand that? Heaven, the eternals, is within you because the life that he put in you is on the inside. By the way, that's eternal life. There's an, that's perpetual and ongoing if you're trying to listen to this with your mind, you're not going to get it. Because our mind is finite. But God is infinite, and his spirit is infinite. But when you, be, when you begin to be touched by his spirit, it's overwhelming to the mind. That's why you've got to tell mind to shut up and just let the spirit do its work. And that's where you'll begin to fall in love with God in his eternal kingdom. Because the mind can't grasp it, but the spirit will begin to reveal to the human race all things that we could never understand with this, this old man's thinker 
But the new mind, the renewed mind in Christ knows these things and he will reveal them to you and bring you into a victorious life, an overcomer's life, a life that is worth living. <laughs> well, you guys, uh, before we get started, as soon as I finish with this, and I'm going to get this wire off and I'm going to jump in the tank, I'm prolonging this as long as I can because the heater didn't work on the tank. <laughs> I was going to say that earlier. I just, no, I don't want anybody, like, I want them just to fall in. <laughs> Done. You fellas and you, you, girls and boys, you're not just going to get wet tonight. This is a new start because you're saying I identify with everything that Jesus Christ did for me. I accept everything that Jesus Christ did for me. So I'm going to read this. This is uh, Romans chapter 6 out of the, the uh, <clears throat> Message Bible. I almost said New Translation. Message Bible. You all ready? So what would, should we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize that we packed up and left there for good? This is what happens in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. And we came up out of the water we entered into a new country of grace, a new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we were lowered into that water, it's like the burial of Jesus. And when we're raised out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we are going in our new Grace, sovereign country. Don't you just like those words? <laughs> so, could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Jesus, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life, no longer at sin's every beck and call. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal to the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive, he brings God down to us. I like the way the message says it in Revelation. Look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood. I just love this. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That means that you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives don't even give it the time of day. You don't run little errands that are connected with your old way of life. Throw yourself wholeheartedly and full time and remember that you have been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. What do you think? Are you joined with that? Are you excited for those that are stepping up and, 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 and giving their lives totally to Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask them that when they, when they get in the water, what, what they're doing. I might even let them speak a few words. We'll see. Are you, are you ready, Rhonda? Let's get this on the road. <laughs> 